good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Engage. Last episode, we did some support conversations. This episode, we're gonna do some support conversations. I got more, uh, between three skirmishes. Will this last one episode or two? I don't fucking know. But... We're gonna go in order this time instead of jumping around. Mavier and Bune, B. What is this flower called? It has a wonderful scent. Ah, that's jasmine. One of the most aromatic flowers I grow. Your garden is quite lovely. I admit I have found excuses to visit lately. It really means that much to you. I'll harvest some vegetables and cook up a nice ratatouille. Right. The taste will move you, I promise. There's no need for you to go to such lengths. I don't want to eat him. Simply taking time to pause here occasionally is. I still haven't seen that movie. I probably should watch it at some point in the future. I don't know. Everyone needs a little downtime. And they can always use a good meal, too. Huh. I was one of the four hounds. Yes. So now I work to protect the weak as an act of atonement for my past actions. People suffer daily. I fail them by allowing myself any pleasure, no matter how simple. Hmm. Don't think like that. I am sorry. It may be some time until I visit this garden again. If ever. What? That, that took a turn. Okay, Mavier. Alright, Mavier and Gregory B. Say, Mavier? Mavier. It's not what I meant. Even though we're Mavia talking, report. I don't really feel like you trust me. If that is so, it is unintentional on my part. Oh, okay. Well, I still thought you should know that I took over from Mavia in my old world. That's how <laughs> For much the, you like, trusted For the, like, 20 me. minutes that I was still I mean, there. Not you, but the you back there. I believe you. And you do seem like someone I could potentially trust with my life. <laughs> what was the me in this world like? You were in the Four Hounds together, right? Are you sure you want to know? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a little unfair to know nothing about him. I told you about my Mavier. Yes, you did. With a great deal of emotion. Very well, if you insist. But I warn you. The tale is not a pleasant one. You should steal yourself. If you're trying to scare me... What I am about to say has not been confirmed directly by him, but it is the truth as I know it. Your counterpart, abandoned by his parents, was taken in by a church of the Fell Dragon. Okay, so far, same as me. Mm-hmm. Unlike you, he discovered early on that he enjoyed pain. Receiving and inflicting. Rumors suggest he considered his own pain to be spiritual, an offering to the Fell Dragon. It was that fanaticism that earned him Zephyr's attention and an invitation to the Four Hounds. In those days, I hear he was almost incapable of ordinary conversation. A complete pariah. I, I can see why. Who would want to be friends with someone who liked pain? <laughs> What about the Four Hounds? How did they get along? Not well. Our tenuous bonds were shattered by the death of one person. Marnie. The death of one person? Was it me? Or Celestia? M Madeline? <sighs> Marnie. This world's Madeline was killed by your and Celestia's counterparts. Gris didn't do shit, though. That was all Zephia. What? They called her death a waste. They laughed over it. I could not forgive them. So, I defected. When I look at you, I see his face. Perhaps that is why I have been unable to trust you fully. Mm. I can't blame you. If he did something that horrible... Well, I understand your attitude now. Orange soda. Sorry. I'll stop bothering you. Thanks. Um... Thanks for talking to me. <sighs> hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Mavier and Rafal B. I am glad that there's at least one Mavier support where three more trips he's talking to one of the <laughs> three wins, I guess. Talking about how they remind him of their four hounds version. As opposed to Mavier! Oh, you're Mavier! Oh, Mavier! You're the best, Mavier. Hauling crates, are we? Allow me to help you. The sentiment is appreciated, Lord Rafal, but that is entirely unnecessary. Whatever you think of my appearance, I possess more than <clears throat> adequate strength for this task. I am so fucking sick of people calling me a twink. I don't even fully understand what it means, but it does make me feel uneasy. Well, you are a twink, so stop! I am aware of that. Why do you seem so eager to be of assistance to me? Are my efforts to help you a nuisance? No, but they are somewhat perplexing. Perhaps if you explained the reasoning behind them, I would be more inclined to accept. <sighs> this appears to be difficult for you. I will not force the issue. When you feel inclined to explain, I will be ready to listen. He feels bad. For now, I will return to my work. Ah, I should have expected he would notice. I must decide how much to tell him. It is not an easy decision, but I ought to be certain how I feel before I speak with him again. Hmm. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> we got a lot of Bs. I have all of Jades now, so that's good. Jade Bunei B. Clearly, Bunei had quite a few, good too. Good news, Jade. I'm going to treat you to that stuffed crab stew we discussed. Ooh. I don't recall any such discussion. That sounds good. Jade's Repose. That would be a good name for it, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> I, I remember now. Oh, right. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> You kept talking at me while I meditated inside my armor. Then you compared me to seafood. <laughs> it involves something like cramming different ingredients into crab shells. Yes, yes. Anyway, that armor of yours, may I have a lick? This conversation is over. Nice. <laughs> Your armor may prove to be an interesting substitute for a crab shell. So much room. What heat does one stew metal, I wonder? Dude. You're not getting anywhere near my armor. There's gotta be spare suits of armor if you want to be that creative about You're it. You're also very obviously not listening to me. Come again? Mm, metal! Oh, yes. Ooh, I love metal. <laughs> Sorry. I will admit this chat is making me very hungry. Are you going to cook that stew or not? Yes, of course. Nothing is finer than sharing a meal with a friend. Yes, as long as that's all this arrangement is. A friend sampling the cooking of another friend. Good, then I will get cooking. But first, just a quick taste of that armor. No. <laughs> uh, Jade is awesome. All right, Jade and Louie B. Is Louie still down bad? <sighs> Here's a story idea. A group of close friends convene and have a lively conversation. What are you talking about? <laughs> I saw consternation on your face and thought you might be struggling for ideas. No use hiding it at this point, is there? You're right. I'm trying to land on the theme of my next novel. Hmm. Well, there you have it. Write a story about a close-knit circle of friends. How close? Do you mean a story where a circle of friends navigate a shared experience? If you like, but I would be thoroughly satisfied just to read about them chit-chatting. <laughs> just make a comedy version of one of those shitty-ass old Play-Doh books? You think I should write an entire novel about friends having polite, everyday conversations? That's all Play-Doh is, question, except it's not polite. It shall be your finest work. I don't Wait, understand how people read Play-Doh and think it's so... I call a plot? So fucking, um... Also, nice line, Jade. I don't know how people read these old philosophical books from, like, decrepit old crony grandpa Greek dead guys, like Plato and 
I, I don't fucking know. Copernicus? What, what are their other names? Louis Vuitton? I, I, I have no fucking clue. And just be like, wow, this, this shit is so eye-opening. I, this is so crazy. I never thought about the idea that words mean things before. It, it's such base-level trash philosophy. I, I don't know how people treat it as such a... It, they treat it like a religious text. It's fucking gross. It's so dumb. Socrates, Herodot that's his name. Is plot more important than memorable scenes? Hmm. Interlate, leave early, they say. An enjoyable scene justifies itself without plot scaffolding. I, I feel like I should have more to say about this line, being someone with a writing degree myself, but... Really? I, I kind of don't. <laughs> but, okay. Hmm. The story idea is too simple. But that sort of flat narrative structure is a joke worth exploring. <laughs> huh. I think you just helped me crack this egg. Thank you, Louie. Right up. I'm pleased to be of assistance. I have high hopes to read your vivid rendering of our characters' spirited conversations. Our? Hmm. Oh dear, you're tight-lipped <laughs> again. Is something else troubling you? No, Louie, that was my laugh. You are so blatant that it's genuinely funny. <laughs> <laughs> Your eye for comedy is indeed impeccable. Alright. <laughs> okay, Jade and Etie B. <sighs> Another great workout. I'm <sighs> ready to take on the world. Mm hmm. Whoa! <laughs> uh, you startled me there, Jade. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I've noticed you watching me since the other day. What's all this about? Uh... If you don't fess up, I'm gonna take this to Prince Diamond. <sighs> wait, wait, I'll tell you. I was watching you and taking some character notes for my next novel. That's all. Character notes? That's what you were mumbling about? I want to see these character notes, and I want to see them now. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. Why can't I see? <laughs> because. Oh. I get it. I've heard rumors about this. How one of the Brodia retainers writes these goofy stories. <laughs> That's you, isn't it? I, uh... And now I'm a character in them, which is why you won't show me. Is that about right? Your writing me is all stuck up and shrewish, I bet. No, it's nothing like that. Don't lie to me. I see right through you. No making fun of me. Got it? I would never... Well, that was not the direction I expected it to go. Oh, well, alright. Jade and Amber B. Here comes Amber. Hey, oh, boy. Amber. I'm still a few chapters short. May I ask you some more questions? Hang on, Jade. First, I have a request for you. Please, please don't write about how I completely failed to catch that alpaca. What? Mm -hmm. My hometown is known for its alpaca expertise. I can't throw that kind of shame on them. I was so bogged down by emotions and pond water that I failed to ask before. So, please... This comes as a bit of a shock. I won't make you a promise that I can't keep, Amber. You've inspired my funniest, most successful works. People are excited for the next one. <laughs> okay, then. Let's spar. If I win, you can't write anything about the alpaca puddle incident. I already did. Fine by me. You're on. This will be our first sparring match since the tourney to select Prince Diamond's retainers. Oh. That was also the first time I lost to you. I've been stuck in second place ever since. That loss was like a curse. No matter what I do, I can't seem to beat you at anything. Well, you did enter the final round of that tournament at a disadvantage. I'm surprised that he... That, that's actually interesting, that they selected them through a tournament and Amber got to the finals. You didn't have any time to warm up. You were too busy trying to help that lost child. That's no excuse. You ended up helping, too. You even found the kid's parents first. 
Hmm, I take your point. You're the one who's always finding success, and I'm the one who's always tripping up. That runaway alpaca was the last straw. My second place streak ends today. Get ready, Jade. There's no way I'm losing to you again. All right, he's getting into a Mortal Kombat pose. <sighs> Had enough? Oh, I just can't do it. I really can't beat you, Jade. It's... it's hopeless. To be fair, she is wearing a full suit of armor right now. You remember our terms? I won, so I'm free to put whatever I want in my next novel. Yeah, I remember. You beat me fair and square, so write about whatever you want. That's just what I'm going to do. But I'll make sure you're the first to read it when I'm done. Okay. Well, that was nice. Okay, Alfred Land, Alfred and Boone B. Hmm. A note of sweetness. That the flower I got you from Firene? Does it, uh, taste as good as you'd hoped? <laughs> yes. Like a lavish royal dance on the tongue. I expect it will go well in a salad. So this is how Firene's royalty tastes. What? Well, it's just a flower. Anyway, I hear you've been busy. Yes. I have been hard at work preparing a dish to round out your muscles. It is ready at last. Thanks! And eating this will give me the firm muscles I've wanted for so long, right? In theory, yes. Sure, nothing's guaranteed after all. Still worth a try. Indeed. In that case, I will bring it out for you. Hmm. How does it look? It looks like meat. Meat cooked in meat sauce on top of a bed of thinly sliced meat. <laughs> well, yes. Meat, being muscle, begets muscle. Such was my uninformed hunch. Well, you're right, though. <laughs> Thus, I figured that the more meat you ate, the more muscle you would grow. That math checks out. I can tell you thought pretty hard about all this. <laughs> and to show my thanks, I'm gonna destroy this meal! Tie me. Oh, what an appetite he has. I am glad to see my dish being enjoyed so... immediately. We can only sow these beefy seeds and wait, hoping that a bounty of muscles springs forth. Imagine this actually works and Alfred just looks different for the rest of the game. I have no evidence it will work, but well, miracles happen. And there's unique dialogue if you do this before, uh, Felzinalog. <laughs> And you have Buff Alfred talk to Twink Alt Alfred, who's like, What the fuck? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm Alfred, Prince of Furinae. <laughs> Alright, Alfred and Tamara B. Hey, Princess Tamara, I heard you ride wolves. Is that really true? <laughs> yup, had several support conversations where I traumatized people with them. Yep. When I was little, I'd tear through the halls of Sohn Palace on Wolfback. Made a real mess. Are you kidding? Impressive. I can't think of anybody that out of control in my family. Really? Most of my family is wild in one way or another. Ooh, that reminds me. How do you like it if I gave you wolf riding lessons? I was so hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Fantastic. I'd be happy to show you the ropes. I'm sure you won't mind getting bitten or thrown off now and again. As in, more than once? Oh yeah, way more. And when the wolf's really agitated like that, I won't be able to call her off. But you can stop her on your own, as long as you've got plenty of muscle. Well... <laughs> Experienced riders can keep their wolves under control, but it's a different story for newcomers. I don't mean to scare you, though. Most people do make it through training with all their limbs. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts here. Maybe it's better I hold off. Can't let myself get sidelined while there's a war on, after all. Yep, yep. Sometimes the bravest thing is knowing when to call it quits. Why don't you show me camping instead? It'd be fun to learn how you face the elements out in Solm, even if it's just a little. Mm. Oh, absolutely! That does sound fun! I'll teach you everything I know. How to set up camp, which animals to watch out for, Oh, oh, and most important of all, singing! Nothing beats a good camping song! Okay, Spongebob. 
Great. As soon as I get myself a tent, we'll be in business. Okay. Huh. All right. Then Alfred and Vander B. When I was little, Queen Lamera gave me flowers for my birthday. They were these real pretty white flowers. I couldn't tell you what they were called. Windflowers, most likely. Queen Lumera was especially passionate about growing them. Hmm. Windflowers. I'll have to remember that. Queen Lumera once made a gift of windflowers for me as well. Oh, was it your birthday too? No. There was nothing special about the occasion. Oh. Hmm. Maybe it was her way of saying, good work, my loyal retainer. Perhaps. Such gestures were typical of our queen. The garden where she tended her windflowers was trampled into mud during the battle. Mm. Thinking about it now, I wish I had spent more time with the queen. Well, we all have regrets. Nothing to do with them but keep moving forward. It's up to us now to keep our people safe, just like Queen Lumera used to. That was a short one. That was a very short one. Wow. Okay, that's all the Bunet. That's all the Vander also. All right, Tamara and Seedal B. <laughs> Soda. I tasty, love tasty meat. So nice and chewy. Ah. <laughs> I already remember what this start. was about. Again? You're breaking your promise again? I can smell it. You've got one of your two tasty dishes on the grill. Oh, the sizzling. Relax, would you? You're acting weird again. It's seed all we're talking you're about. You're a world renowned dancer. Not to mention a famous fortune teller. People say you're so dignified, so composed. I used to dream of meeting the great seed all. Are you disappointed? No. About 90% of the time, you live up to the hype. You act different around, uh, flavor? <clears throat> My apologies, Princess Tamara. I blame the meat. The way you prepare your dishes, the bold flavors are just beyond delicious. Tell me something I don't know. <clears throat> Princess Tamara, why do you always start roasting meat when I'm around? That's not quite what's happening, is it? Come on, give it another think. The truth is, when I've got a good roast going, you find me and barge in. <laughs> so you're saying I'm doing this to myself? Yep. I see. Uh, allow me to apologize, Princess Demera. You didn't break your promise. I simply lack willpower. <laughs> That's my fault, not yours. I'll make sure I don't come looking for you when you're cooking with such flair and flavor. If you'll excuse me. Okay. Turtle, wait. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right, then. Tamara and Marin B. You know, sitting with you by a toasty fire, it feels just like the good old days. Yes. We shared many a night like this after that first encounter. Our scuffle with the bandits. Back when we were just a couple of travelers roving the queendom together. At the time, of course, I had no idea my princess was actually a princess. <laughs> you never asked. Honestly, I assumed you'd piece it together. Listen, Princess Tamara. Most royals don't sneak out of their castles to rain justice on unsuspecting bandits. Yeah, well, I'm not most royals. No kidding. <laughs> no argument there. But really, do you remember how shocked I was to learn that you were the Princess of Solm? I had just gotten through telling you, basically, my whole life story. How I had always dreamed of becoming a knight, but my lineage made it impossible. I told you that was the reason I ran away from home. And then, you... I asked if you really, truly wanted to be a knight. And I said yes. With my whole heart, yes. You placed your sword on my shoulders, one after the other, and said... She used the sword back then? I hereby deem thee a knight of the queendom. And I laughed. 
I thought it was all in fun. <laughs> but you weren't laughing, my princess. You were looking at me like you meant it. Oh. That's the whole support. <laughs> Alright then. Seedal and Alcrest B. The Femme Man and the Femme Boy. That's amazing. Wolf jousting sounds like a thrilling sport to witness. That it is. But the fights out in the crowd, <laughs> that's where you'll find the real action. There are plenty of ways to amuse oneself in Sol, but nothing is quite like the Wolf Arena. The Wolf Arena. So many stories. What a fascinating life you've led, Seedal. Your descriptions are so vivid. I feel as if I've witnessed it all with my own eyes. The caravan lifestyle sounds like so much fun. Coming and going as you please, following your own whims and curiosities all over the world. No restrictions, no cares. And if you ever grow bored, you can just set off on another journey. <sighs> I wish I could have that life. Yes, well... There's one story you haven't told yet. When did you first join the caravan? I bet you were born into it. Am I close? No. I was born in a town by the sea. It was... beautiful. Mm. I was so young when my father died, I have no memories of him. Mm. My mother raised me. She was a fortune teller, but... an ill-fated one. She got sick and died when I was young. One thing led to another. Before long, I was living on the streets. On the streets? But why? I was a child without a family. Where else would I live? Oh. But one day, a caravan was passing by. The travelers called to me, invited me to join them. And I did. I traveled with them from that day on. Speaking was difficult for me then. Words were hard. So my teacher taught me to dance. Hmm. I learned that I didn't need words to communicate. That saved me. I see. Uh, my apologies. That story is not so amusing as the others. Please, I'm the one who should apologize. I didn't think before broaching the subject. No, I've darkened the mood. I'm sorry. I think this is a good place to stop for now. Another time, Prince Alchrist. Hmm. Seedal lore. Okay, Seedal and Chloe B. Well, Seedal, what do you think? Is this supposed to be food? Of course it is. What exactly am I looking at? What are the ingredients? How is it prepared? It's eggs cooked in sugar. What? Eggs from what? From a rare fish caught in Firenze waters. For the most part. Most part. For the most part? What kind of eggs are in here? <laughs> The delicious kind, of course. You've got nothing to worry about. Oh, I'm worried, all right. <laughs> but you went to all this effort to bring food to me. It would be rude not to give it a try. Ugh, the look, the smell, it's ruining my appetite. Folk food isn't for everyone. I'm sorry, Chloe. I don't think it's for me. What a shame. This kind of thing might have bold flavors that won't trip up your footwork. <laughs> what? You found a dish that's flavorful yet won't distract my dancing? I spoke too soon. I will eat your folk food. That's great! Go ahead and dig in. Here we I go. can't believe she just gaslit him into eating fish eggs boiled in sugar. Ugh. Still can't stomach it, huh? No, it's actually quite tasty. Bitter and sweet. But I like that about it. Really? What a relief. The flavor's so strong that I was worried you couldn't keep it down. You wouldn't believe what I ate when I traveled with the caravan. I have a strong stomach. Maybe sometime you could teach me more about these kinds of dishes. I'd be happy to. And Seedal, thanks for giving it an honest try. Okay. My fingers kind of hurt right now. I don't know why, but they just feel uh, very stiff. 
whatever. Chloe and Louis B. We haven't even gotten a single A support this episode. Take a look at that, Louis. I did say I'd focus Isn't fire to Bs. That couple shares a meal together? But I didn't get any A's by accident. The girl hand feeds the boy, and then the boy returns the gesture. So intimate. Like a prince and princess from my fairy tales. It's quite a sight. What imagines the sort of lives they lead, how they met, and so forth? It's an interesting change of pace to observe your favorite scenes now and then. <sighs> Uh-oh. For someone who just said it's interesting, you don't sound so invested. Chloe, I do not mean this rudely, but are you one of those? One of those what? You know. Heteros. Huh? I mean... No? Okay. Think nothing of it, then. I'm sorry. There is something I feel is lacking after all, it seems. <laughs> and what would that be? I'm not certain, but... I suspect what's missing is... You. It's fucking smooth. Me? How so? Everyone adores you, Chloe. You're perpetually surrounded by friends. The closeness you show with those friends, there's nothing quite like it. Hmm. The side of it fills me with such joy that I would hold it in my mind forever if I could. The drawback, it seems, is that scenes without you in them lose their luster. I can tell you mean that as a compliment, so thanks, Louis. But I'd be careful who I said that to. I know where you're coming from with that hobby of yours, but other people... It takes a lot of explanation before people will understand. Not all of them have the patience. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. We should probably get going. That couple we stared at is starting to stare back. Yes, perhaps it's time for us to withdraw. Shall we see what else we can see? <laughs> All right then. Next, Kagetsu and Ivy B. Uh, the Princess Ivy. I was raised in Pale Sands. <laughs> okay. Why are you telling me this? You said you dislike unknown quantities. So, I am going to tell you everything about myself. Then I will be known. Not the worst idea, I'll grant you. <laughs> Once you come to know me, we will no longer be princess and retainer, but friend and friend. It is worth trying, at least. Uh... <laughs> what else can I tell you? I have two siblings, brother and sister, both younger, very cute. My father has great swordsmanship, but my mother has strange powers, which perhaps came to me. I care very much for my family, but I have also long dreamed to see the world at large. That is why I explained to them in writing my decision to leave, and I am on this journey now. <sighs> oh no, uh, have I done something wrong? How foolish of me. I should not have presumed you would wish to hear my entire life story. Please forgive me, Princess Ivy. I should have noticed sooner it was not what she wanted. No, that's not it. On the contrary, I am actually... rather pleased. I had no idea that becoming friends with me was so important to you. <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you. Ah, hmm. uh, you are too kind. I don't dislike you, Kagetsu. I do dislike unknowns. They make me wary. But that doesn't mean I dislike you as a person. And after today... I think it's safe to say my impression of you has improved. Wonderful. So, we may become friends soon? Not the worst idea. <laughs> that was nice. Okay, next up is Louis and Zelkov B. Good day, Zelkov. Would you care to join me for a spot of tea? Louis. I am beginning to suspect you are attempting to spy on me. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> I could never. Very well. 
I shall be plain with my intentions. At last. By all means, proceed. I would like to take care of you, Zelkov. What? Excuse me. You see, I am the you eldest. You will not take me alive. Friends. Oh, there is a knife in my gut. I think we had a misunderstanding. My mother died early on, so I had a tumultuous upbringing in a house solely of men. With my father providing for the family, it fell to me to look after my brothers. My impulse to take good care of people remains strong even to this day. And you direct this impulse toward me? I am older than you, am I not? I'm actually 35. Balderdash. Yes, I know. Indeed. But the look on your you face was me great. As someone who wants looking after. Thus the incessant invitations to tea, I surmise. Quite so. In a way, I feel as though you could be one of my younger brothers. Ridiculous. I am <laughs> older than you, you know. That matters little to me. I suppose it matters little to me as well, so long as you have no ulterior motive. All right, big brother. Let us have tea. I do understand the yearning <laughs> an older brother feels to care for a younger one. Ah, do you have siblings as well? Shut your eyes, they are terrifying. Perhaps I do. In any case, your efforts are wasted. I have no desire to be cared for. I suspected you'd say that. Please forgive me for running roughshod over your own feelings on the matter. <sighs> In lieu of an apology, I will accept a relaxing cup of tea. You possess leaves which help to impart a restful sleep, if I recall. <gasps> Wait right here, Zelkov. <laughs> I shall prepare it at once. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Oh, I was gonna say, there's no way I've already got all of them. Wow, I, I guess I had fewer than I thought. Alright then, uh, is it just... Yeah, just two more, alright. Marin and Citrine B. Whoa! Will you look at that? An endangered Brodian red swallow! Very rare indeed. Wait! Where are you flitting off to now, you gorgeous thing, you? Oh, what a beautiful creature. What a fucking nerd. <gasps> Is that an Illusion albatross? I didn't know they migrated through here. And where do you think you're going? Please, take me with you. <laughs> um, Marin, what are you doing? <sighs> I, uh, nothing. <laughs> what, uh, are you doing? Wait, were you watching me just now? Yes. I didn't mean to intrude. I couldn't help myself, actually. Your frolicking reminded me of a clown I once saw perform. Well, that's nice to say. Oh, you don't say. I, uh, actually, I'm going <coughs> to be in a play. Yes, I am. Me, Marin. <laughs> a play? How wonderful. Nothing fancy, just a small production. And you are exactly right. I am, in fact, playing a clown. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how she has her voice deeper, deep, deeper, deepened a little for this bet. Uh, I called it. What an interesting role for you, isn't it? Though a real stretch from the calm, cool, everyday, cool me. I have to act a lot. A real challenge, you know. You can't be this cool and then be a clown without digging deep. When is your play? <laughs> you must tell me so I can attend on opening night. What now? I mean, that's a good question. I wrote it down somewhere. I'll have to check in my pockets. <laughs> but I also heard a rumor it might get canceled. Not for sure, but probably. Definitely for sure. Oh no! Please, if it's a matter of funding, you must, must, must let me help. <laughs> nope, not a money thing. It was... there were... creative differences. <sighs> Actors, so difficult. Ah, well, those things always blow over. Let me know when they find a new date. I'll be there. I will be sure to do that. <laughs> oh, Marin, you fucking nerd. 
Alright, our last one for the episode then, even though we're only 40 minutes in. I, I'll, I don't know if I'll think of something to do or what. Uh, Marin and Yunaka B. Oh, well, that should do nicely. Hey, what are you up to? Oh, hello. Just taking care of some weapon maintenance. Oh, that's, uh, that's quite an interesting scimitar you've got there. I bought it at a curio shop. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Understatement of the century! That weapon's a masterpiece, a work of art! Look at the curve! So smooth, so steady, that's traditional Solmic craftsmanship! Look at the edge! Only Solmic blades combine rich, majestic history with deadly killing power! What? Huh, guess I didn't realize. <laughs> you know, you got pretty excited there all of a sudden. If you like it that much, Maybe I'll give it to you. I'm not even using it, really. Are you serious? What an incredible gift! I'll happily take it off your hands. Give it here! Huh, now, there's just one thing. I'll give it to you if you agree to let me do a bit of monologuing when we spar from now on. <laughs> uh, what? Come on, what's that got to do with anything? No matter how badly I want the scimitar, it's not worth letting you monologue in combat. Too bad. I guess I will be using this majestic killing blade after all. Uh, fine. Forget it then. Okay. Well, that was silly. Okay, do I have any bond combos? No. Um. Spin the wheel? <laughs> Stink of something to make the episode and not only 42 minutes long. I thought I had enough for an episode, but I guess I was two-thirds short, or one-third of the episode. Oh, well. Oh, fucking well. Get your fucking notification off my phone, Google Play Store. Shut up. Oh, 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 Alright. Uh-oh, someone's coming. Who's it gonna be? Until such time as you awake... Why is it always Vander? Oh my, you are quick to rise today. Sure am. Okay. What, what do you mean I haven't woken up to Vander since his B support? Shut up. <laughs> Isn't he at A now? You fucking... <laughs> Don't lie to me. I actually can't remember. Alright, I need to check and see how many B supports I have left, because I really need to do... I really need to bunker down on the support grinding, since I'm uploading this every day now. But, we'll see. Um, so, Alir is good, Boucheron's good, Saphir is good, Linden is good, Mavir is good, John Zelkov, okay... Hortensia's good. Controller. <laughs> Push the down button. Jade's good. Alfred's good. Bune is good. Tamara is good. Seedal is good. Vander is good. Fogato and Etie, so there's two so far. Alchris is good. Chloe is good. Kagetsu is good. Louis and Ivy, so that's three. Zelkov, same thing. Ivy, same thing. Etia, same thing. Amber is good. Diamant is good. Gregory is good. Madeline is good. Rafal is good. Paynette is good. Marin is good. Citrine is good. Celine is good. Fram is good. Vale is good. Pandreo is good. Goldmary is good. Lapis is good. Yunaka is good. Rosado is good. Zelestia is good. Nell is good. Clan is good. Anna is good. Okay, so there's only three more Bs. Cool. Um, I guess look at achievements. I don't know. There's not really much to, much to do right now. Uh, not donations, thanks. How much money do I have? 14,000? It's really not that much. Alright, you guys can read. Obviously, these are ones that I've gotten during skirmishes. I really should try and get special uh, abilities on everybody, shouldn't I? 
All right, we're at 398 fucking achievements. Um, I guess we'll just end this episode here so I can start the next one because next episode we're gonna progress the story yay so that's gonna be it for this episode if you liked it then be sure to press the like button and if you didn't like it then fuck you too remember to subscribe follow me on twitter and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff and as always my name is godzi and i will see you all next time Goodbye! Yeah!